I think it's, it's extremely useful for uh, European companies, especially smaller ones that perhaps uh, don't have such a big presence here yet to get a feeling for the, uh, the mentality here and the environment uh, uh, and also the, the, com the competition. Uh, and uh, I know from my own experience that lots of, lots of companies come here uh, from Northern Europe and I'm constantly meeting with them and talking about Silicon Valley. Uh, so, yeah, very good idea. Um, I also think that it's important for, <clears throat> for U.S. companies to have a better understanding of what the environment in Europe is. I mean, if you read about, you know, if you read the U.S. press, you read articles about how Silicon Valley doesn't understand Washington. Well, if they don't understand Washington, I mean, understanding Europe is, is even more difficult because Europe has a, quite a different view of how things should be done. And some of the ideas maybe aren't so good. Others are actually much better than in, in the U.S. and Silicon Valley. Well, I mean, I, I liken you know Silicon Valley to Rome. I mean, there is a there are a unique set of circumstances in what was used to be called Santa Clara Valley, and that centered around you know, Hewlett Packard and Stanford University in the early 1950s. Uh, that was uh, you know 70 years ago, uh, and it's all built up over time uh, in an unplanned way. I, I'm highly dubious of planned attempts to, to do things like this. And uh, so, you know, we have to accept that what is called Silicon Valley is a unique, sui generis thing unto itself, in other words. And that uh, the rest of the world can do things its own way, but kind of a planned, legislated approach won't work, not in something that deals with innovation, just by definition. Other than that, I don't think you need to fetishize Silicon Valley either. I mean, I, I think there are lots of ways of doing innovation, clearly, and, uh, and one model is here, but I think that we see uh, other ways of doing it as well. One of the things that does distinguish <clears throat> Europe from the United States, and now we see it in extreme form, in Silicon Valley is the nature of financing. Uh, the amount of, here you have vast amounts of private, private equity, you know, sort of IT companies, startups especially, are not, don't go to banks. Uh, in Europe, the model is the opposite, the primary source of funding in banks, which obviously favor more stable, uh, projects, not innovation, but things that are more guaranteed. And I think that's been a significant break on, uh, on development. In fact, if you look at the really successful companies that have come from Europe and established themselves in Europe, they in fact have received private equity from U.S. investors, not from Europe. And I, you know, I know the both Skype, <coughs> which came from Estonia, and Right now, one of the really hot um, fintech companies in, in all over Europe is uh, TransferWise. Again, you know they got their money from Sand Hill Road here. With, I mean, there, that's that's where the money is. So, uh, fortunately, uh, the the private equity companies are looking at Europe, but Europeans have a hard time looking in Europe for their financing. Well, I'm not sure if in Europe, uh, <clears throat> at least in, uh, in I the IT area, that companies actually look that much for public funding, because it's very rigid. It's very hard. Just, I know the uh, startup a number of startups, and they are not looking to get any kind of money from the European Commission, because you get locked into something. There's much less freedom. They much rather go for private equity. You know, I mean, the fail, I can't say if there's a big, if, what the difference is, but I, I assume the failure rate for startups anywhere, or at least in Europe and the United States, is probably pretty similar. I mean, 
most startups go bust, no matter what, no matter where. Uh, it's just, it's really the really good ones that, uh, that make it get the kind of financing and then, and then become successes in the market. Get over your fear. I mean, if you don't, if you want to play in the big leagues, then you have to, you have to come and, I mean, you have to basically make your case with the people who are willing to invest. Uh, and if you don't want to compete, well, why do a business? You know, I mean, that's, that's the point. It's not going to, uh, uh, you're not going to go far if you're afraid of competition and making your product known to the people who might invest in you. I think you just get over that fear. I understand that fear. I mean, I, <clears throat> I've seen it myself with uh, some startups where, you know, they're not, they're not used to the kind of aggressiveness that is necessary to get things done. But on the other hand, I tell them, well, you have to go out there and make your case. And if you don't make your case, you're not going to get funded. Well, clearly we have, a, uh, in my own, I can't speak about other countries, but at least in my country, there's a, in my country, Estonia, we have, a, uh, we have a, a big percentage of people, perhaps more than elsewhere, that see IT and IT development as a, <clears throat> as a thing to do. Not necessarily always make a lot of money at it, but those, a lot of people do make a lot of money at it. Um, but we're small. I think that regionally the Nordic Baltic area is already uh, more advanced within Europe than the rest of the European Union and uh, it will continue to be like that uh, for uh, especially if Europe does not get its act together on the digital single market <clears throat> then the northern European area will be the place where you'll see much of the innovation. My hope is that all of Europe sort of becomes more innovative. Um, and that's uh, certainly our agenda during the uh, Estonian presidency of the European Union this, this half year right now. <laughs>